because this is one of the most significant seabird breeding sites in the Indian Ocean. In fact, it's the top breeding site in the eastern Indian Ocean, which is our west, western coast. Marine ecologist Chris Sermon has spent the past 29 years studying Abrolhos seabirds, most of it self-funded. His work focuses on Pelsart Island, a 12 kilometre long, low-lying isle home to hundreds of thousands of seabirds. We have 14 species nesting there on the one island, spread over an area. Um, <coughs> but within that area we have, you know, some, some threatened species, for example, lesser noddy. Now, lesser noddy's only nest on three islands, all of those islands at the Houtland of Rollis, and the largest population of those um, are at Palisade Island where we have our um, database. If we want to protect this and not in that population, we need to do the research that we're doing at the Hamlet Bros. So we better understand how that creature ticks. But on top of that, we also have things like uh, brown noddy. So we've got 80% of brown noddies that nest in Australia nest on Palisade Island. We have, in, within the Helmut Abrolhos group, we have the largest populations of West Hart shearwaters breeding in the Indian Ocean. I think it's about a, one million spe um, birds in that, that population. That's significant. We have um, about 50% of the sooty terns that nest in Australia nest on Palisade Island. Palisade Island, we've probably got close to three or 400,000 pairs of birds nesting. Um, you know, we've got significant populations, Australia and gl in a global sense, nesting just down the road from us here. With increasing tourism numbers expected with the Abrolhos' recent declaration as a national park, Dr Sermon is keen to ensure the Abrolhos is as prized for seabirds as it is for underwater wonders. He's just released a book to highlight the island's environmental importance and to raise money to further his seabird studies. There's been a lot of stuff written about shipwrecks, you know, the Batavia, Sawick, um, and a lot about the rock lobster fishing industry because that's the, the main industry out here. So, there's a, but there's never been a voice for the for the natural environment out here. It's always played second fiddle in pretty much every decision that's ever been made. Um, so, you know, it's time. It's time for a book now that we've got a national park. Um, it will force some more protection, hopefully. But we need to know what's out here. The public need to realise that this is a you know supremely unique group of islands that's sitting off our doorstep. Um, and you know, you can come out here and have a look at some fantastic things, but we need to look after it. We have a responsibility, we're the caretakers. In particular, Dr Sermon is calling for seabird significant sites like Pelsart Island to be spared from overnight camping. Too much human contact could force birds to abandon their nests, while visitors could also unwittingly trample the burrows, eggs and chicks of ground nesting birds. There has been talk about camping on, on some of the islands and setting out overnight stay areas there and I think that, that, that can work in the, in the right place but I don't think the right place is adjacent to, to internationally significant seabird colonies.